Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. Now, this week, I have noticed a lot of questions on the forum, an unusually high number of questions regarding caustics and how to get them to work for various uh, types of scenes. And so, this week's topic is going to be on how to create a water box. And with a water box, you can try out different uh, caustic setups, try out different techniques, and really get a feel for how they work so that when you try to apply them to a scene, you're not confused by, oh, is it because I'm using this material? Is it because I have this many lights? Uh, you know, all these different confounding variables. So let's get started. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start off by creating a box. Simple box objects, about that high. So it's kind of squat. We're going to be making kind of a short water box today. So I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. And uh, we're going to need some light coming in here. So I'm going to create kind of a, a like an overhead light type thing. That should do it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to inset it. Extrude it a bit, just like that. Maybe a little bit higher so that we can put a... Hey, I bet we could put an area light in there. That'd be really cool. Let's do that. Excuse me. So, all right, we've got our, uh, we've got all that set up. I'm going to flip these polygons so that now we're looking inside the water box. Super good. I'm going to apply an easy gray material to this. Nothing special there. Um, we don't want to attract any attention, but you can play around with these materials later on and see how they react with caustics, and then you can sort of gather the uh, learning experience that way. Sometimes they don't get along well with um, the architecture and design materials. But we're not going to get into that just yet. So uh, let's see. Let's use an MR Area Omni. That's a mental ray area omni light. I'll throw it right in the middle. Scoot it right up to the top there. And I'm going to make this a cylinder light. A cylindrical light. Uh, about that thick there. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees so that it'll run the span of this opening. go just like that make it a little bit higher there and I don't want it to reach all the way I don't want this light to poke outside of the polygons because then we're gonna get light leaks and then that'll lead to some really weird errors that we don't want to have to deal with right now so that looks good okay it's just a, a little bit skinnier just like that and I'm gonna show the icon in the renderer so that when we render it, it, it we can see the light uh, the light source so it, it just looks a little bit better when you do that for these kinds of tests so the next thing we need is uh, some water. <laughs> Let's make some water. Uh, I'm going to create a simple plane object. Better yet, better yet. Let's take the let's take the bottom of the box because it's already sized properly. I'm going to hold down Shift, click, drag. I'm going to move it up a little bit, just like that. And I'm going to make this a new object. We call this water. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to select the newly created water plane. And gosh, it, it needs some tessellation. We need more polygons to work with. So I'm going to select that one polygon. And I'm going to scroll down to tessellate. OK, I'm going to click tessellate a few times. OK, that has started slowing down my, uh, my screen. So I'm going to do that, step it back by one. OK. And let's apply a Turbo Smooth modifier. Uh, no iterations in the viewport, but let's give it two iterations on render. And finally, we need a displace modifier. And displace is going to give us that surface turbulence that we're looking for. Uh, because caustics, you can try this yourself. If you try to push caustics through a flat surface, through to another flat surface, onto a finally flat surface, you're going to get like light shining through the object in an uninteresting way. It's when light is perturbed by a by a refractive surface that it actually creates those really awesome caustic effects. So we need to we need to really jumble up these polygons uh, a little bit. So luminant center, we're definitely going to want that. Uh, I'm going to select I'm going to select a noise map. And okay, that that looks like it would do a pretty good job. So we'll stick with that. So now you can see I've kind of made this really wavy surface. 
Um, and you can play with these different surface materials too. Apply whatever map you want to make it interesting. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see what else. It needs a water material. So water and glass have very similar properties. You know, they're they're semi-transparent. They have a ref uh, an index of refraction. So whenever you're creating water, you can generally just use the glass material in Mental Ray, the glass physics phenomenon. And of course, there are others, you know, like pro materials, and, and that applies too. You get different effects for each one. Um, but I'm going to stick with this one, glass physics phenomenon, because it's really easy to work with. 1.5 looks just fine. Uh, yeah, this looks okay. All right. So we're going to apply this to our, our, um, our plane object here. And uh, I think that's all we need for materials. So for the next thing, let's let's engage caustics. We're going to hop into the mental ray render panel. That's a uh, hotkey F10. And under the indirect illumination tab, I'm going to scroll down to, uh, here we go, caustics and global illumination. And I'm going to engage caustics. If you're using an old version of mental ray, you might have to engage both caustics and global illumination, but don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do it. And down here at the bottom, we have some of our, our most important properties, the first of which is all objects generate and receive GI and caustics. That says all lights are part of the caustic solution, and all objects should be part of the caustic solution. They should generate them when they get hit by, by, uh, by photons. They should refract photons. They should receive photons. And the light properties is what allows you to uh, make the solution very accurate. You can say, I want 200 million zillion caustic photons, and that'll make a very accurate solution. It'll take forever, but it'll be accurate. I'm going to set myself for 200,000 caustic photons for a nice, sharp solution, and the decay is usually a little high for me, so I'm going to put this at 1.75. The decay is what says, um, after this certain arbitrary amount of time, the caustics should die. They should not persist any longer. And so if this if this value, this decay value is too high, your caustics will disappear before they actually illuminate your scene. And if it's too low, those caustics will bounce around all over the place. They'll make everything really bright and, and blown out, and it's, it's really unpleasant. So um, if you're getting really crazy effects or you can't quite seem to, to get the caustics to, to show up at all, it's usually because your decay value isn't right. Okay, we're looking good. Let's take a quick test render and, and see how this is looking. All right, this is what I'm talking about. So sorry, you saw my uh, an earlier render there. I was playing around myself. But take a look at this. So the light is coming down through the water and creating those patterns down on the bottom here down along the bottom. And it's creating some patterns up on top. I don't know if you'll see it after the compression by YouTube, but you'll, 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 you'll see this when you follow along, that it'll create caustics both above the waterline and below the waterline. And there you have it. So from here you can, you can play around with all kinds of things. You can apply materials to the walls and floor. You could try multiple light sources. Um, you could try different maps that will perturb the surface and see what kind of patterns you get as the light shines through your, your um, transparent material that you used for the water. Try different materials on the water. That's another thing. So until next week, go ahead and play around with caustic. See what you can learn by creating a water box. And stick around next week for another Monday movie. Until then, take care.